If you know me personally, or have followed me on social media for any length of time, you'd know that I love military history, and I have ever since I was a kid. Um, I was lucky enough to have parents who embraced this and took me to museums and battlefields, and one of those battlefields I got to visit when I was younger was Yorktown in uh, Virginia. And I don't remember much from it, but I knew that I had to come back when I was an adult. Well, I don't know about the adult part, but I am back in Yorktown, Virginia, and we're obviously going to explore the siege that took place here, just over there a couple hundred yards. Um, we're also going to explore a few battles that happened in and around this area that you may not be familiar with. Um, but before we do any of that, I want to explore the town of Yorktown itself. After all, this was the city that was in the middle of this famous siege, and uh, I think we're going to be presently surprised about what we find up ahead. So before we begin our trek down Main Street and learn about some of the historic structures here, you'll see the fortifications right here on the edge of town. I don't know if that one you can see with the shadow, but it's right there. And here's a few more right here. And off in the distance you have a few more. So these were the outer works of the British defenses. Now something to note is many of these are Civil War entrenchments and fortifications, and they built them on top of many of the British works here. And this sign reads, the old town which you enter here is ringed by stout Civil War entrenchments built on top of the British works of 1781. Englishmen, Scotsmen, Welshmen, Hessians, and Loyalist Americans were quartered here while besieged by American French forces under Washington. So when you come to Yorktown and you see some of the defenses, know that many of them are from the Civil War and some are restored. Now, you see the close proximity of the defenses here. Well, Cornwallis wanted his headquarters near those outer defenses, and he was quartered here. This is Secretary Nelson's house. Now, this house would obviously be a target for American cannon and French cannon way over there, and this house would be destroyed. And all that remains of this house is the original foundation. So, you can see the foundation here runs all the way there and around here. And the sign here in the middle reads, First Headquarters of Lord Cornwallis. It was destroyed during the Siege of Yorktown in 1781. Now, obviously once his headquarters was destroyed, Cornwallis obviously needed to seek shelter and refuge somewhere. And he'd retreat to a nearby cave, which I think is in this general area. All right, so we're coming to our first stop here, and this is the home of Dudley Diggs, and this home was built around 1760. And unfortunately for Mr. Diggs and the home, it was damaged during the Siege of Yorktown, and uh, he would abandon this home and move to Williamsburg after the war. But just to give you a little more information about Diggs, uh, he was a member of the Virginia Assembly, and he was captured by the British during a raid at Charlottesville, Virginia on June 4th, 1781, and uh, he'd remain a prisoner until after the war. So. This home here, uh, during the fighting, would be at least occupied by his wife, if he had one, uh, because he was a prisoner during the Siege of Yorktown itself. So like we mentioned a little earlier, uh, that the battlefield itself isn't really that far from here. Well, during the restoration process of this home, they found some cannonball damage in the attic there. That is surreal. And here is the restored Diggs house. Pretty cool, you kind of get like a, uh, a Williamsburg vibe here. So something that you'll find a lot of times with these colonial era houses is you'll have structures outside of the main house, like you see before you. So usually these would be like your granary, your storehouse, uh, your kitchens, things of that nature. And just to give you one more view here of the uh, Diggs house. All right, so we're going to continue down Main Street here and uh, see what else we can learn. So something to keep in mind is historic structures aren't the only thing of note here. Now, this little gully or ravine here, this was a major thoroughfare before the American Revolution linking 
the main street of Yorktown to the busy waterfront district. Yorktown was a pretty busy harbor known for tobacco before the American Revolution, but this is one of the paths that uh, colonists used to uh, link the waterfront to uh, Main Street here. All right, so this house is absolutely beautiful. In the house that we're looking at here, this is the Nelson House, and uh, it was home to Thomas Nelson Jr., who is a, actually a Yorktown native and signer of the Declaration of Independence. Now, this house was actually built in 1730 by Nelson's grandfather, Scotch Tom Nelson, and uh, the Nelson family was heavily involved in politics throughout Virginia, uh, in the, especially in the early 1700s. Now, Thomas Nelson Jr. would be a commander of the Virginia militia during the American Revolution, and he actually commanded units during the Battle of Yorktown. So that's pretty interesting. He was actually commanding units for the Americans as they were shelling the town of Yorktown itself. So, as you can imagine, he had some vested interests here. Now, like many of the structures here in Yorktown, uh, the Nelson House was damaged during the Siege of Yorktown, and actually, some of the damage is still visible today. So, let's have a closer look. I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised here. <laughs> so, right here... is a cannonball in the side of the Nelson House. Now, Something to note is the cannibal was placed here, I believe in the early 1900s, but the impact crater that the cannibal rests in was from the American Revolution. And, let's see, back up a little bit. There's a, another impact crater right there. If you can't see it, it's right there. And, gotta back up a little more. Hopefully I don't get hit by a car. Way up there right there there's another cannonball in a uh, rather large crater so if you've ever been to Yorktown you'll know that the side of this house is uh, in direct line of sight of the American and French cannon so these are no doubt uh, American and French impact craters from their artillery pieces man oh man that's so cool So here we have the Customs House that was built in 1721 by Richard Ambler, one of the wealthiest men in Virginia at the time. Uh, he served as a collector of import and export taxes. Now the Custom House was used as a barracks at the start of the American Revolution, and then after that it would be converted into an inn and storehouse. Um, now when fighting broke out here at Yorktown, it was taken over as a barracks by the British, and then when the British would surrender, French troops would occupy this building. So this building was not only important for the wealth and commerce of Yorktown, it served as a barracks for British and French soldiers. That's pretty cool. Now directly across from the Customs House is the Cold Diggs House. Now today this is used as a coffee shop, a, an amazing coffee shop I might add. But when constructed, it used to be the residence of Thomas Pate, who owned the land uh, in 1699. Now he would die in 1703. And uh, there, is, there is some confusion about when this house was actually constructed, but the general consensus is it was constructed around 1700. And here's a few other little nuggets about the Cold Diggs house. Like many structures in this area, they served uh, a few purposes. So this would be used as a tea house, a storehouse, and uh, eventually this building will become the first National Bank of Yorktown. That's pretty interesting. So if you're ever planning a trip to Yorktown, or any historic city for that matter, it pays to get up a little early. I'm here at 6.30 and uh, it is absolutely empty, which is great for filming. So a little bit of hustle on these history trips and uh, you can get some great content. Think about all the people that have walked down this very street from maybe Cornwallis himself to Washington, Marquis de Lafayette, you have French soldiers, British soldiers, just think about all the other people that have come through this main street here. That's the awesome thing about history. You're walking in the footsteps of people that you read about. And I think that's why history is so great. And uh, here's a few signs 
as to uh, what Main Street here would have looked like. So we have west along Main Street, and there's west along Main Street. I always love these then and nows. And now we're facing east. So you have a glimpse of what east along Main Street would have looked like. And what it is today in 2022. So this is a pretty cool little building. Now today, this is called the Museum on Main. It's a small little museum with artifacts from not only the Battle of Yorktown, but other little artifacts from Yorktown's history. But before it was a museum, it was a uh, medical shop or doctor's office. And the doctor that resided here was Dr. Corbin Griffin. And he was a physician in Yorktown who was actually imprisoned by the British and held on a ship anchored in the York River. Now this little town was exposed to a lot here. And the original uh, doctor's office here uh, was either destroyed during the siege of Yorktown, during the fire of 1814, where much of Yorktown actually burned, or uh, they think it may have been destroyed during the American Civil War when most of the western side of the town blew up during an explosion. Now, Yorktown was actually uh, right in the middle of the American Civil War during the Peninsula Campaign in 1862. So not only did the American Revolution ravage this tiny little town, fires and uh, the American Civil War swept through this area as well. And no town is complete without a good tavern. So this is the Swan Tavern that was opened in 1722. And it would remain the main tavern of Yorktown all the way up until the American Civil War. Now in 1862, the Union Army would use this building to store gunpowder and ammunition. But a fire in December of 1863, uh, the tavern exploded with much of the uh, western portion of the town, destroying that doctor's office as well that we just saw. Now directly across, the Swan Tavern here is the gallery at York Hall. It's an information center, a gift shop, and also a little museum. And this structure here would act as Yorktown's courthouse for much of its early history. So before we wrap up here today, there's one more place that I want to show you. And uh, it's pretty unique. And in all honesty, I've never really seen anything like it. So uh, let's see what lies up ahead for us. So here is the Archer House. Now the original Archer House was destroyed in that great fire of 1814, but this is the original foundation. Now that's not really what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you is right here. Now Yorktown is a pretty hilly area, something that I didn't really realize, especially being from Florida when the tallest hill is about three feet. But here on this cliff side here, is a room and this room is called Cornwallis's cave now it's unconfirmed whether or not Cornwallis stayed in here or not but when his headquarters was destroyed at the start of the American and French bombardment of Yorktown he retreated into a bunker or cave now what we do know is this cave acts as a storehouse and powder magazine so let's have a closer look at uh, Cornwallis's cave here. Again, not much, but just imagine what uh, used to be stored in here. And uh, there is potential that Cornwallis was in this cave, although that's unconfirmed, but pretty neat. Definitely uh, pretty unique. It's something I wasn't expecting. I was just walking down the water line here, saw the sign and uh, glad I walked over. This is pretty cool.